Welcome to the online lecture of vehicle testing and homologation. I am Milan Trivedi, assistant professor at LG Institute of Engineering and Technology. In today's lecture, we are going to start with the last chapter of vehicle testing and homologation that is the automobile testing standards. As the name suggests, you are getting clear about that what is there in this particular chapter. We are going to discuss about the different testing standards. Yes, we all had heard about this particular word standards, but as far as this automobile testing is concerned, we are focused on some of the limited standards. Although when we talk about this particular standard word, we are clear about the ISO standards, but we haven't heard about any of the different standards which is present in the particular automobile industry. So we are going to discuss in detail about that different different standards. So, before even starting with the concept of that standards, let us first of all understand why this particular standards are important in any of the engineering industry. When we talk about these standards, it will give you the clarity of number of different aspects. Out of that, I had just taken or bifurcated eight major parameters which gives the idea that the standards are important in any of the industry. So let's begin with that particular concept. The first thing and the foremost thing that it increases or Im improves the particular productivity. And that is the biggest concern to the any manufacturer or any of the business person. Because if the productivity is being improved, it can have a huge impact on the market part of that particular product. The particular product sales would be increased if the production is higher. So, uh, it actually improves the productivity. Secondly, it reduces the cost as the production is in a larger scale and at very easy pace. It can have an impact on the cost part. We can reduce the cost of the component as well as it can improve the quality as we are providing the particular component as per certain specifications itself. So, it increases the quality part. And the fourth one that is strengthens the competitive advantage. Some of the part is being manufactured but it is not having any standards and if it is produced with certain standards so naturally the competitive advantage would be achieved because certain specific conditions would be met when the parts are being standardized. So for that reason the competitive advantage would be much higher. The fifth part is improves the safety part. Whenever the standards are there, the safety parts are always, always kept in the mind. So, the standards parts are always safe. The sixth, that it facilitates the innovation. Once the competitive advantage has been received by any of the particular organization, always there is a need to improvise on that particular concept. So, right? So, that leads to actually improvisation can lead to the innovation part. The seventh one, it increases the speed to the market. As the component is product produced in a lesser time, it can reach to the market even in a lesser time duration, right? And last one, that it stimulates the innovation part. Not only it facilitates, but it stimulates. Some of the organization, if so, uh, some new part is development is going on, so another uh, particular industry which is actually having competition with that organization will also stimulate on that particular part. They will also try to improvise on that design part. So this can stimulate the innovation and we can have better design in our particular component. So this is the reasons that why the standards are important in the automobile. Now let us understand the four standards that is the Euro standards. Euro standards is actually standing for the European emission standards. They had actually given the norms for the evaluation of how much exhaust gas is actually allowed to liberate in the particular atmosphere. This is given by the European and it is followed in the Europe itself. In India, we are actually following the BS norms that is the Bharat stage norms. This European standards had given the specifications for the values of carbon monoxides, carbon dioxide. That's, that is a COX normal emissions as well as NOx emissions. So let us have a quick outlook of the particular standards. As for this particular table, we are having different different Euro norms. As, as per that series, we are naming it as a Euro 1, Euro 2, Euro 3. 
and so on right now euro 6 is there. So what they had given is the petrol NOx emissions, diesel NOx emissions, diesel particulate matter. The values of that particular gases in gram per kilometer has been specified under this particular different different euro norms. And as you see as the year progresses the different series has been arrived and they are actually getting more strict towards the particular gas emissions. So in the year 1992 when the euro 1 was there the NOx emission of diesel was allowed to be 0.97 gram per kilometer whereas in this zero uh, particular euro 6 it has been just 0.06 gram per kilometer. If you have a look towards this diesel particulate matter in the euro 1 it was permitted of 0.14 gram per kilometer whereas in the euro 6 it has just been kept at 0.0045 gram per kilometer because the global warming has been happening out. So based on that particular scenario and the uh, particular car usage is also been increasing. So they are actually getting more and more stricter towards this particular aspect. We need to remember this particular different gas uh, uh, values which is being permitted time to time. Let us have a look towards this uh, with the help of a chart from the particular graph itself you can have a easy remembrance of the different values right. So from the Euro 1 norm to the Euro 6 norms you just uh, see this particular graph is been seen. This is for the particulate matter and the NOx emission for the petrol cars and if you take a look towards for the diesel car in which both the particulate matter and the NOx values are there. So the graph appears like this. Again the graph has been shrinking as the Euro 6 norms are proceeding. Further future in we are also having Euro 7 norms as well. So again most strict criteria can be observed. Now let us understand the next standards that is the SAE standards. Society of Automotive Engineers. We all know about this particular term. But we do not know that this particular organization is involved in the development of standards as well. They develop standards that is the specifications for not only the testing parts but for the manufacturing of different different components as well. So just let have a look that in which particular domain this particular SAE organization has given standards. They had given standards for the aerospace industry more than 3900 of documents are there. For the aerospace material specification only they are having 2800 plus number of documents and for the ground vehicles that for our cars and all they are having more than 2000 plus number of documents with them. They had developed that number of different different standards. Based on that that is like a code like structure from that you need to have an idea. So, that SAE is given standard for bodies and structure, for the chases, for the design, engineering and styling, for the electrical and electronics component which has been used. For the environment they are having different standards, for the fuel and the energy sources they are having standards. They are having standards for the human ergonomics, interior part of the car, cabin part of the car, maintenance related standards they are given. NEH standards that is noise, vibration and harshness related standards, safety and the taste related that NCAP test which we are discussing or for that certain standards are required which we had already discussed in this earlier chapter. So we are clear about that the dummies height should be in this particular way, the traveling speed of the vehicle must be this. This is just a standard part so such standards are also being given by the SA norms as well as they are having the standard for the power and propulsion. So just uh, I am giving you brief idea that how does the standard name appears like in the case of SA. So for that I am taking two examples that is J2926 standard which is for the rollover testing. So if you refer that 2926 that would be a certain guidelines that this in this particular way only the rollover test required to be done. There is one J2531 standard which is for the impulse coins from the automobile. Whenever you are checking for the noise part of the automobile, you need to refer the J2531 series. Then that particular uh, brief guideline would be there that is required to be followed whenever the testing has been done as per that norm. 
the next uh, standard in our particular syllabus is the ISO. This name we all have heard that is the international standard organization. But yes, this particular ISO is also involved in the concept of the auto well testing standards. They are also given the different different standards in the field of auto well. In this one standard we actually need to remember right now is the ISO 26262 which is for the functional safety of the electrical as well as the electronic system which is present in the automobile. And the concept of the ISO is very easy that analyze the risk earlier. We are having different stages in the manufacturing. First there is management which decides that this product is required to be developed. So after that de decision we go for the development, then we produce that part we lead to the operation part then the service of that has been done right and uh, lastly there has been uh, continued. So uh, the main idea of the ISO is to focus on the development whenever the product has been developed at that particular stage only you need to have a proper design, you need to have proper standards, you need to meet all the testing criteria even. So analyze the risk very early as well as establish the safety requirements and fulfill requirements through the different tests. So this is all about the concept of the ISO norms and keeping up to this, thanks for watching.